Hi everyone and welcome back for episode 3 in our quest series in Unreal Engine 4. In the last episode we created the quest log UI, so when we push the Q it will display a quest log with a story quest and the side quest currently the player has. So the next step we're going to do today is going to look at creating an interaction uh, for the player to interact with anything in the world really, but most importantly our quests. So this is going to be a bit different from other videos I've done with Interact, so we're going to do it a bit differently. The reason why we're going to do it differently is because we can't foresee exactly what things will be interactable. The way the system is designed is so that we can drag a quest onto absolutely anything and that thing will become a quest giver. Now not knowing that in advance makes it quite difficult to determine whether or not we can interact with an item or not. So we're going to change things up a little bit and do another way of doing interactions. Okay, so back to where we were previously, we're going to go into our uh, main character. So once into your main character, we are going to add a interactable cone in front of the character. So I'm going to go add component. Uh, sorry, add component. Uh, capsule collision. You can do any shape you like, but that's what I'm going to go with. Interaction field. That's what I've named it. And I'm just going to reposition this so it's in front of the player as a sort of vision cone almost type of thing. Okay. So that's what we're going to use there okay click compile and then we're going to go into the event graph so in the event graph we're going to do a couple of things we're going to say uh, an event make an event for when we overlap something with this interaction field and another one for when we end overlap so with the interaction field selected in the components list we're going to right click and go begin overlap and you'll see add on component begin overlap. So this is what that one means. So it means when we overlap that field, it will do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it add a widget to the screen. And that widget is going to say something like press E to interact. So let's first of all create that widget. So we we'll click compile and back out of here. And I'm going to create a new widget. So I'm going to go in my quest UI folder, add new. Using the face widget blueprint, and I'm going to call this interact message underscore UI. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to delete the canvas panel. All I need for this is just a text box, so text and drag that onto your hierarchy. And the text block we're going to type in press E to interact and click compile and that's all we're going to do for this we can close this out so what we're going to do now is we're going to add the input for our interact a hotkey for it so in the project settings you want to go to input on the left hand side underneath action mappings hit the plus sign and type in your new one to be saying interact and in here you can choose a key I'm going to type in E and select the E key and close that. So now when I push the E key, that interact event will trigger. So let's go into our, back to our player character. Okay. So the player character has this on component begin overlap with the interaction field. So what next we're going to do is going to create a new widget. So I'm going to drag out from here and go add text, or not text, sorry, widget component. There you go. And on the widget component, with it selected, you can change the details of that widget component. So I can choose which widget in the widget class. So I'm going to drop down here and choose the interact message. And I can change its space. So I want, don't want it to show up in the world, I want it to show up in the screen space. That way it will always be facing the screen. And then um, I want to use the return value here, drag out and promote to a variable. 
and I'll name this one interact message like so so I've stored a reference to this widget that I've created at the moment this widget belongs to this uh, character but what I want it to do is to show up above the uh, whatever I'm interacting with uh, above their character head so what I'm going to do next is from the return value here is I'm going to attach this to a component so go attach to a component and the component you're going to attach to is going to be all the way back here it says other comp other comp other component that goes right across to there and that creates your attached to component so with that now done I can click compile and if I go into the game you can see the push E to interact message appears so it's slightly off center okay that's because we haven't horizontally aligned our text so let's go back to our widget folder uh, folder in our quest UI and in here I'm gonna click on my text here and make it center aligned click compile push play and there is you push E to interact so the next job is to make it turn off so when I face away from the character it turns itself off oh wrong one let's go into our player character okay so there's the begin overlap we now need to do the end overlap so again click on the interaction field in your component list then right click in your blueprints and type in end overlap and you want the add on component oh, sorry on component end overlap and with that done we're going to drag the variable of the interaction interact message sorry drag this out choose get and right click on that and choose convert to validated get so before we delete it we're going to check that it's still there if it is there then we're going to delete it so get the interactive message and from there we're going to destroy component after that we're going to set the interact message and leave it unplugged that resets the variable so it's basically null click compile oh, and push play there's the E to interact and the face away it turns off but I'm going to push it from any angle and it will appear nice and in view perfect so the next job is to make it so you can actually interact with it and more importantly determine whether or not it's a quest that's on it and interact with the quest so from there I'm going to go into my quest system folder and I'll make a new folder called quests and in that folder I'll make a new blueprint class called actor call it quest this is going to be our parent quest so this will hold all the details that all the quests will share and all the code that all the quests will share so open this quest up and we'll give it a new variable so the bottom left new variable and I'm going to call it the new variable name and it's variable type of text click compile and the default name I'm going to put in underscore quest name compile again and we can close that We'll come back to that a lot later on so obviously we're going to be working with it quite in detail later but right now i just need a name so the quest parent i said acts like a parent to all the quests okay that's where all the code is so any quest you want to make all you have to do is right click on the quest and create child i'm going to call it quest and i'm going to give it 001 as a number so the way this is going to work is I'm going to drag the quest out and attach it to the NPC friendly in the outliner so whatever you want to attach it to as a quest giver you just drag it onto it like so and although it's not in line with it we can make it in line with it so we make it nice and organized 
So let's make that organized. So open up your quest parent. So in our quest parent, we're going to create a new function. Click on the plus function, and I'm going to type in organize uh, quest in editor. And this thing is simply going to just look at the what parent it belongs to. So I'm going to get attached oh, attach parent actor. And then from there, I'm going to set location of this actor to match the parent actor's location. So from here, I'm going to get the location. And then from there, into new location there. So this function will actually do that. However, how do we call this inside the editor? Well, when you click on the function itself, go right up into the top details and you'll see call in editor. Tick this button and compile it. And now if you click on the quest, you'll see in the details panel, a button saying organize quest in editor. It's the name of that function. Click on that. And it'll move it to the location of the, uh, its parent. So it keeps it nice and organized and, um, easy to group things up together okay so with the quest now in there we're now going to determine whether or not we can interact with the quest and make it show the name okay so let's go into our third person character and let's look at creating that interact event that we set up earlier so what this is going to do is going to look at whether or not first of all this widget actually exists, meaning that we can carry on. And if it does, we're going to then get the variety of char uh, children and parent actors to get the, eventually the quest we want. So this input action event, the first thing we do is check whether or not the message actually exists. So drag interact message out and choose get and make that a convert to validated get. And if it is the case, then we can carry on. That's an easy way to check whether or not we can interact and we're actually hovering over something. So with the interact sorted out, uh, we can then check for the parent it belongs to. So with the interact message, we're going to get uh, owner, not owner, parent, get attached parent. Then the, that will get the attachment here. From here, we're going to get the owner, because that returns a component. We don't want the component, we want the actor. So this will now get the actor this component belongs to. So this other component has now got the message. And this thing here is going to get the component that we have attached the message to. And then that's going to get the actor the component belongs to. Very confusing. Hopefully I'm making sense. Um, so that will get the owner. So that will return this chap here. With him there, we're then going to get child, all, all child actors. And this will return an array. Now, get all child actors refers to this list here. So it is here, and the child actors are all that's attached to it. I believe that's the case. Or it will be get all get attached. So it's this one get attached actors. My bad. Let's get rid of that one. Get attached actors. There we go. So get attached actors will get that list. Okay, all the actors attached to the NPC. And with that list, we're going to do a for each loop. Cuts an array. And there's only one thing attached to it, and that would be the quest. So we need to check whether or not this is a quest we actually got so we're going to cast to quest and then from there we can access the name get name i'm just going to print that to the uh the screen with print string and click compile so now if i play the game walk up to this chap here and push e and you can see the quest name appears on the top so to change the quest name, all I have to do is go into my quests, quest01, and 
click on up here the name I'm gonna call it humble beginnings and compile it so if I push play he's now got the quest humble beginnings and I can't hit E again outside I have to be near him to hit that key there so now I've got access to that quest and that means I can then show dialogue or a cutscene or whatever and then add it to the quest log later on anyway that'll do for this episode thanks for watching uh, if you have any questions please leave a comment below and I'll try and get to them as quick as I can or support me on patreon like these fine chaps have and uh, from li literally as little as a dollar a month you can help me out massively and uh, you can ask me for all sorts of help in our discord channel as well as get access to videos early as well as many other benefits anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you next time thank you bye bye